Folks, there's one segment of the agricultural sector that I think we must always give a little bit of appreciation for. Because most of the time we sit here, we talk about the agricultural exports, we talk about food security, jobs, and all of these good things that are happening in agriculture. But there must be an engine that is behind that. And no, 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 I'm not talking about just the regulation, labor, and everything else. All of those are important. But we start somewhere, and we start from the seed industry. If you ask me of saying, hey, what is driving all of this productivity and all of these gains in the South African agricultural sector? Amongst other things, it's really the work that is done by the scientists. These people sit in the lab and they think about how the environment is changing, what are some of the diseases that are coming up in various spaces in the world, and what is our climate like in South Africa, and what are the seeds cultivars that can actually do well on our side. And I think this is the one aspect in our country that has actually given us, amongst other things, greater prosperity in seeing that our agriculture is thriving and ultimately you get to have that food that you are enjoying there at home. Because the conversation is always about, did we have a drought? What are the food prices? What's going on on the jobs? But I think we must look back and say, hey, are we investing enough on the people that are actually making sure that we are coming up with the seed cultivars that will ensure that this sector continues to thrive for some time. Because nothing is given, the environment is changing with the climate change now and many diseases that we are seeing or carrying left, right, center. We need then to ensure that now we have the seed cultivars that are able to withstand this environment. But it's a one thing for the scientists to do the work those folks that are sitting at the Department of Agriculture, Department of Health, and many others that are in the regulatory space in South Africa, they also have to have the openness of saying, hey, we see the technology that you are bringing in. Let's test. Let's run the trial. Let's ensure that it complies with all of the regulations that are necessary. After that, let's embrace it and put it out in the market and ensure that South Africa continues to thrive and be the country that it is today. Because look, this whole food security notion and the jobs and the prosperity in agriculture is actually built on that. We've said here on AgriView repeatedly, that back in 2001, year 2000, it was only South Africa in the African continent that began saying, bring what you call the genetically modified crop, bring the hybrid seeds, let's test them on. And I think the scientists and the regulators in this country, they satisfied themselves that these are healthy and we can continue to produce them. And South Africa is no exception. Look at the people that we are competing with, the South Americans, those that are sitting in the US, Canada, Australia, and elsewhere, they actually participate in the same way as we do, and they use these seed cultivars. So we have progressed to be where we are. But spending on research and science is an important one. This is also the area, by the way, at which we can open up jobs for students. Because there are many students, others are studying microbiology, all of these scientific awesome courses that I think are important in contributing to the food, fiber, and the beverages value chain in South Africa. So I think the legislative framework that allows for that innovation is the one aspect. But also the discussion about saying, hey, let's revitalize the research institutes in South Africa, such as the Agricultural Research Council, OBP, and many others. Those, the revitalization of those institutions is key, but not only just by throwing on spending, but also opening up the opportunities for new young scientists to come in. And then when they come in, we ensure that they are then finding an environment in a country that is more prosperous and also more open to science. And I think that is what will give us ultimately the progress that we talk about. And I think in organized agriculture, there's already a number of seed organizations that are doing this work. And this is just on the plant as well as on a crop side. But the issue of embracing technology doesn't end there. You need to think about in the poultry industry, in the livestock space, what are some of the genetics that we can put in? I mean, look at this. I'm from the Eastern Cape. Many of you know, of course, I have to always promote the Eastern Cape. Great province, by the way. Come tour in, in here. We have great beaches, great places to go to. You can visit the ocean, enjoy. You must come to the province. Eastern Cape, I'm promoting you. You have to pay for this ad. Anyway, on agriculture, you have to come um, to the Eastern Cape and see how the genetics have actually supported us. In the Transkei area, for example, 
this is one of the regions whereby we've seen the wool production in South Africa improving. And there was one aspect on the intervention about that. It was the genetics, where we ensured that the right genetics are spread and the farmers are supported and they were able to get the genetics. Then they can breed and have sheep that are producing the type of wool quality and the volume that we actually need as South Africa. And as a result now, if you look at us as South Africa, we are amongst the key exporters when it comes to the wool production. And the very same Eastern Cape that I'm mentioning, it is almost the anchor of the South African wool industry. So it was the genetics on that side. But those genetics don't end there. You talk to folks that are in the livestock industry that will tell you that if you want to bring new farmers into the main chain, one of the interventions that you need to do is the investment on the genetics. But that investment does not only just come on from the thin air. You have to put money and employ the scientists and think about what other people are doing globally. And that is where the breeding is happening. So when we are thinking about South Africa and even beyond our country, considering the continent and its journey, to prosperity. I think one of the aspects that we have to ensure that we spend a lot of money on is on the research, on seed breeding, on the genetics aspect, and also just generally accepting and embracing science. I mean, a few months ago, there was some studies that were coming out of China and just showing how much the Chinese government and many other private entities there are spending on research on agriculture, on food science. And I think that this is where then South Africa needs to be taking its step on. And on this aspect though, again, I will come back to the point that I have mentioned to say the regulators, they need to have an openness of accepting these technologies when they are there. Register them with speed. Once they are registered and registered them with speed, then we are able to have the sector that is growing and producing all of these surplus. Because we are already sitting in surpluses in here. I mean, in front of me, these are the figures about our exports in the second quarter of this year. They didn't just come out of thin air. It is again that agricultural progress. If you look into this, in the second quarter of this year, our agricultural exports were at 3.7 billion US dollars. That is up 10% from last year. It speaks to two things, that the environment is conducive, but also at a farm level, we are getting better yields. Either you're looking at crops, you're looking at fruits and vegetables, and you are looking in the livestock space. And the basket of our export products is quite mixed. I mean, I see here citrus, apples and pears, maize, grain, avocados, wool, beef. These are all products that in South Africa we are putting out to the export market and making sure that we have those export earnings. But it's not just the story about the exports, but it's also about the jobs that gets created in the communities at where we produce. We still have over 900,000 people at a primary level. And I brought in the issue of the Eastern Cape because those genetic improvements in those communities, it is in some of the communities that are actually in deep poverty. I mean, when you think about the poverty statistics in South Africa, the Eastern Cape, Limpopo, and KZN are amongst those provinces that have their own difficulties when it comes to that. So ensuring that agriculture plays a part and plays a part in terms of improving the agricultural productivity, but also ensuring that we are exporting, it means that we can earn money as a sector to sustain those jobs and ensure that this sector continues to thrive. And those exports are well diversified, by the way. And yes, we still need to push the diversification approach. It doesn't mean that we've diversified enough now, stop diversifying. No, 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 we need to go further. But if you ask where did that 3.7 billion US dollars of revenue in export earning come from, about 40% of it was the African continent. And in the African continent, again, 90 cents in every dollar amongst our neighbors in the Southern Africa uh, region, which means then we have to keep those relationships going. We cannot fight with our neighbors. We have our difficulties, but hey, they are buying our products. So we have to keep the regional value chain. It's a one part of that, but it also speaks to an important aspect that the South African farmers, they play an important role in sustaining the food security in the African continent. You think about the stable crop in this continent, maize, especially in Southern Africa. About 26% of it is actually produced here. And we make sure that the whole region does have a little bit of a cushion. So it's both that regional responsibility, but also commerce that sustains this. All grounded on science that ensures that we do have this output that we can put out as the, uh, to the world. And of course, 
22% of that is the EU, an important region for our fruit and wine. And you do have about 21% in the Middle East and Asia. But that Middle East and Asia is the one area that I think in South Africa, we still have a capacity to expand and increase our exports to. Because of course, in the African continent and the EU, we're now sitting in relatively better areas on that when it comes to the exports as well as our participation on that. But I think in other regions, we can still expand more. 7% is the Americas. And hey, our exports to the US actually, in the second quarter, we're up 26% year on year, around about 161 million US dollars. But let's not celebrate that per se, because it does mean that there was a lot of front, front loading as people anticipated that there will be tariffs. The key thing that all of us in South Africa, we should be seized with is this idea of how do we retain the US market at preferential tariff levels so that we can continue to participate there. But beyond that, retain what we have and look out to the world. But all of this, as we do it, sustaining jobs and the communities, we must remember it starts from the breeding side, genetics as well as seeds, which is the driver of our agricultural progress. With that, folks, let me stop there for this week. And thank you so very much for supporting us and following this work. And do subscribe to the channel and spread the word. Agriculture is part and parcel of the South African economy and it must be supported and centered into the conversation. Thanks for watching.